of all dwellers and welcome back to my kitchen today we're doing oops another uh recipe from the fallout cookbook today um i was looking through it and i thought uh what am i gonna make next and since it's almost saint patrick's day i thought the uh brahmin baked potatoes were kind of fitting they have corned beef and all the flavors of a Reuben sandwich on them. So I thought, well, this would be perfect. So we are doing the Brahmin twice baked potatoes. And the first thing we need to do is make up our sauce. And let me get my things together here. Um, first off, we are going to need a half a cup of mayo. Get that out of my way. These are pretty simple and should come together fairly quickly. I think the longest thing is getting your baked potatoes done. Um, I have already pre-baked mine. I did them, cleaned them really well, and then um, pierced them and baked them in the oven on 400 for about an hour until they were done and they are cooling so we'll be able to move on to the next step after we get the sauce done so the next thing we need is a fourth of a cup of ketchup and we also need a tablespoon oh the glare I am so sorry guys it's a tablespoon of ground mustard and a tablespoon or a teaspoon sorry one teaspoon of dill weed dried dill so that's going in and we also need a half of a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce me get that and grab a paper towel I don't want to get this all over the place we also need uh, two teaspoons of a prepared horseradish See if I can get that in there. Oh, yep, it's going to fit. Yay. That's one and two ish. <laughs> get that out of my way. All right, let me uh, get this stirred up. And I think this is mimicking the Thousand Island dressing that's typically used in a ribbon it doesn't look the prettiest but or at least not now there we go now it's starting to look better make sure you move, smooth out any lumps from the mustard you don't want to bite down into a big clump of dried mustard Alrighty, that looks pretty good. There's one right there. Alright. Give that a taste real quick. Looks pretty good. I was afraid it was going to be a too much dill i'm not a big fan of uh dill weed um it can become overpowering if it's used too much but this is about the perfect amount so let's get this out of the way for right now we're going to set that to the side for a minute and the next thing we need to do is move my cutting board over which i hope you guys can see there we go eh. 
ish. Let me move this out of my way. Now we want to uh, grab a bowl. Now, I, when I do my <clears throat> baked potatoes, I pierce them down the side that I'm going to cut. That way, it doesn't uh, rip the skin on the top where I don't want cuts. Because in these, we are going to refill the shell after we scoop all the flesh out of them. And they should uh, cut easily. Now, I, again, I did these in my oven. I suppose you could do them in the microwave, but I think microwave potatoes or baked potatoes are kind of rubbery if they're overcooked. So I tend to go the old fashioned way and keep them uh, in the in the oven. So now what we want to do is leave about a fourth of an inch of potato in there. Because we need our shells to hold up to be restuffed. Don't want to get too close to the skin. But you want to remove enough of the potato that uh, you have it to work with to make the stuffing. Oh, let me move this over here where it's a little closer for me. Now I'm using uh, the large russet baking potatoes, which is what the recipe calls for. Um, I don't, they're like a, a meatier kind of potato. Um, I don't think red potatoes would work as well for these, but you could certainly try to substitute them. They would also be on the smaller side as well. And these are a uh, going to be used as a side dish most generally is what they're uh, intended for. At least that's the section of the cookbook that they are from. But I don't know. I think these would be great as a uh, like a little lunch. Like if you made them up the night before and then took them into to work or somewhere that you can uh, reheat them. The next day they would make a perfect lunch portion. Alright, that looks pretty good. Let's get our next one here. Sorry, it's taken me a little bit of time to get these out. But I'm trying to be careful not to go too far. These have been sitting a little bit longer than I intended. Um, they're a little cooler than they probably should be, but they are going to work. Just be mindful of how far down you're digging. And I think that looks... Uh, Pretty good there. And the last one. All right. That looks pretty good. Oh, getting potato everywhere. All right, let me uh, get you guys over to the stove for the next part, and we will get these little guys stuffed up. All right, <clears throat> hopefully you guys can see okay, and it's not too dark. I'm going to try leaving my light off because I know when I turn it on, it uh, causes a horrible glare on the camera. Um, so we'll try this, and if I can keep the light off, I will, and if not, I'll have to turn it on. But in my pan, I'm starting to melt three tablespoons of butter, 
and to that I'm going to also add two ounces of cream cheese. And we'll get those uh, oops, slightly melted and that is not going to work. Grab the paper towel and get the cream cheese off my fingers. Alright, let me uh, get these melted down. And I need my book. Let's see what we need to do next. Um, and we also need, and I need to grab uh, a measuring spoon. also need uh, two tablespoons of sour cream added to this. <clears throat> Excuse me. I always have the hardest time getting stuff out of these little things. Alright, go to my measuring spoons. don't want to let this go down too far. We don't want it to uh, separate. We just want it to uh, warm up slightly <clears throat> so it'll mix in with the mashed potatoes better. And now we need to add our potatoes. Move these around here. And I think I might need to get my masher out if I cannot do this with this. And we can turn the heat off as well. Let me grab my masher. Now, it, the recipe also calls for um, a teaspoon of caraway seeds to be added into these, um, but it's an optional uh, step or an ingredient. I do not care for uh, caraway seeds that much, so I'm not going to add them in, but if you like them, they can certainly go in to the potato mixture. <laughs> Pardon me. That's looking good. You don't want to overwork your potatoes. They'll uh, get gummy if you do. You just, but you want to get them uh, mashed up and get the majority of the lumps out. And that looks good. Also need to add in a little bit of salt and pepper and this is to taste. Now we're going to be putting uh, corned beef and sauerkraut and Swiss cheese on this so you might not want to go too heavy on the salt because those are all uh, salty ingredients. I don't want too much black pepper in there. looks pretty good. I think this is good enough to uh, go into our potatoes. So let me get you guys back over to the other counter and we will get our shells filled and in the oven. Alright, we 
are back. I need to grab a spoon here. Now it says to start with a little bit of the sauce down in the bottom. So we will kind of spread it around a little. into each one. And the last one here. I think those look good. Let me add just a little bit more to that one. And maybe that one too. There we go. All right, now our next step is, pardon me, we need to uh, add a little bit of the mashed potatoes back into the, uh, into the shell here. And you're gonna wanna divide this evenly between all of them. Let me uh, get them started a little bit here so I can see how much I'm working with. A little bit more in there. I think you want to kind of try and keep the uh, sauce down underneath so you don't want to push too hard on it but you certainly want to get it spread around. Whoop, come out of my way. I've been wanting to make these for quite a while. Reuben's are my favorite one of my favorite, like my top five favorite sandwiches. And this just sounds so yummy. And I've been excited to try these. Just waiting on the perfect time. And I think St. Patrick's Day, if you don't do them around this time of the year, you know, what other time of the year would you do them? All right, what do we have over here? There we go. Let me see if I can get the last of the potato out of here. Oh, we've got a little bit left. Uh, I need more hands. There we go. And we got just a little bit of potato left. Let me, uh, Sticking on this one here. It looks a little left out. There we go. Alright, our next step is with the sauerkraut. Now I've been letting my sauerkraut drain. Um, I'm using just canned sauerkraut. Um, I am out of my homemade or I would have used that. And it calls for about a cup of sauerkraut, but I have um, two picky eaters in my house who won't eat it. So I'm only going to actually put the sauerkraut on two of the potatoes. The other two I'm going to leave without. That way they, let me move these over because those are pretty much where I want them. Um, they won't eat it, so I'm not even going to, I want them to eat the potato. And I'm okay with leaving the sauerkraut out of it. If I can keep it all on top of it there. And I like a lot of sauerkraut, so I probably put a little bit more on there than what I should have, but you know, Reuben's. Uh, are better with it I think. Alright, that looks good. Let me get this out of my way. And I'm going to move these over to the tray here. And get my cutting board out of our way. Alright, I mean, ooh, that's really going to be bright. I am so sorry. I did put the doll side down. <laughs> to try and help with the glare. 
All right, our next step is the corned beef. Now, I, um, because this is right before St. Patrick's Day, I have not cooked my corned beef yet. So I am using the uh, deli sliced uh, corned beef from my local deli. I'm just kind of roll it up a little bit here on top. I can get it all separated out and let's go uh, one more there I think that looks good kind of just roll it around our finger a little There we go. And let me get these other two taken care of. Okay, there we go. Now we've got all four of ours topped. Let me wash my hands real quick. I just didn't want to go from touching the meat to touching cheese. Our last step here is to add um, shredded uh, Swiss cheese to the tops of these. And this is about a cup of shredded uh, Swiss is what the recipe called for. So I'm going to Try and divide this evenly among all of them. Try and keep it on top instead of everywhere. But you know how it goes some days. There we go, that's looking good. Now these two look here on the end look a little smaller just because they don't have the uh, uh, sauerkraut on them. Alright, I think that looks good. And I think I'm going to, well, maybe a little bit more on the ends. Alright, next step is to put these in a 350 degree oven for 15 minutes. And then after the 15 minutes, we're going to turn our broiler on and let the top brown for about two to three minutes. So I will see you guys when I get done doing that. All right, guys, it has been about 18 minutes since uh, these went into the oven. That was 15 to cook and three to uh, under the broiler. And they're done and they look really good. So let's get one of these. Uh, plate it up and give it a taste because I am excited to try this one. It smells really good. I hope it's uh, it tastes as good as it smells. And no, I'm not taking that big of a bite. <laughs> this thing is screaming hot straight out of the oven. See if we can get a little bit of everything here. A little bit of the sauce, potato, sauerkraut, and the uh, corned beef. Mmm. Mm-hmm. This is really good. It needs just a little bit more um, of the sauce, I think, but there was plenty left over we could easily drizzle that over the top and i think i will when i finish this off i hope you guys enjoyed this video again this was the brahmin twice baked potato um if you guys are interested jay pick a death and i are compiling a master list of cooking videos from 
you, our YouTube family and friends, um, kind of gamers cooking for gamers. If you guys are interested in being a part of that, let me know in the comment section below if you've already got your video done and up on your channel. Leave me a link in the comment section below. And again, if you guys want to see more of the cooking uh, videos from me, let me know down in the comments. I um, love doing them for you guys. It's a, uh, other than gaming, cooking is my other passion. So I think with all that, oh, I will leave a link to the um, other videos in the Fallout Cooking list that I've already done the playlist in a, in the link down in the description below and I will also leave a link to the master list that JPEG and I are coming up with so I hope you guys have enjoyed I've been Vault Girl I've got another video to or cooking video to get ready for you guys so I hope you guys have enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one